Welcome to the Barclay Radio Ball Show, brought to you by Cruz Chevrolet. Kevin O'Rourke alongside the head coach of the Bucks. CSU has now won four straight. The Bucks are 5-2 and two in Big South play. Another big one here at the Buck Dome Saturday against Gardner-Webb. And coach, you guys have certainly played some really good basketball this last week and a half or so and a great win against UNC Asheville the other night. Boy, UNC Asheville is a really well-coached, uh, skilled, talented team. And um, it was a really entertaining, uh, good college basketball game. And, um, we were very fortunate to win, very fortunate to win. Uh, they, they'll be at the top of our league. They'll be in the top three or four teams in our league when it's all said and done. So um, quality win because it's such a quality team and, and such a well-coached team. 31 points for Sean Emily, three straight over 30 points. Uh, he's going pretty good right now. Yeah, he's playing well. Uh, Sa really is. And what a miracle, what a blessing. You know, I've said it across the country that he's got to be recognized as one of the best point guards in the country. Um, it's got to get outside the Big South in our region on how good he is. Um, he's given his heart and his soul uh, to this team and to this university. And uh, I'm so proud of the way he's playing. I'm so proud of how he's helping to lead our team. Um, but he's just one of the pieces of the puzzle. And he'll be the first one to tell you there's a lot of guys doing a lot of work uh, so that he can score the ball. And, We've had some guys really give up some shots and, and take on different roles. And, and then just the work that, that our rebounders are doing, um, you know, the offensive, to 21 offensive rebounds is incredible. And uh, it extends possessions, get us a, gets us additional possessions. And uh, the work that those guys that said, and Paul and Aaron and Ruben and those guys are doing is impressive. As far as the pieces of the puzzle, as a team, to go through that tough stretch before Christmas with three really hard road games and then start one and two in the league. What do you think that stretch did for your team? Well, I think it's toughened us. And we talked about it a lot. You and I have talked about it a lot on and that it's going to kind of make us or break us. And, you know, I think a real pivotal game for us was the Campbell game. And we were very fortunate to win. We know that. Uh, Campbell's really good, talented, well-coached team. And we had some, some balls go our way. And, um, you know, we, we got to two and two. And, and then we were able to, to put three more on top of that uh, to get where we are today. So um, I think NC State was a, was a tough one, but I do believe that Wofford and Colorado State really helped us improve and, and, and expose some weaknesses, help us, helped us to see some things we could tweak and uh, helped us grow as a team. Take a look at some highlights from three games in today's show. First, starting with the Liberty game last Wednesday at the Buck Dome and you guys a uh, close game here in the first half you shot the lights out in the second half made 10 of 16 from three and, and seem to be coming together offensively these last few weeks. Yeah we really executed well against Liberty and uh, Liberty is a good defensive team they're the second best defensive team in our league and um, you know we, we were a tough match and and we moved the ball well we shared the ball great ball movement here and when Nimley gets going like that it's it's tough I think he had scored the first 11 points of the game and he just he gives us so much confidence and we play with great confidence when when he's on the floor so this is the first of three straight 30 point games best we can tell he's only one of two players in the country to do that this season bucks matched a single game program record against division one foes with 17 made threes and will has really shot the ball really well after struggling a little bit there in december he really has he's just really playing well he's he's rebounding the ball well he's showing great leadership and, and there's Liberty showing some of their talent, and a very talented team and a well-coached team. We're anticipating that Liberty will make a good run in the second half of, of conference play. I know they, they've had some injuries, and you know we, but we played well. Give our guys credit, uh, we played well. We shot the ball well, and when we shoot the ball well like this, 17 threes, we're, we're a pretty tough match. Liberty hunt in here in the first half. It's going to end up being a 34-26 game at halftime, but Sean Nimley kept him at bay, 19 of his 30 in the first half, Arlon Harper here. He only scored 12 points in this game, but had six assists, and you guys shared the ball really well. Yeah, Arlon really took on a role as a distributor of this game. Because of the way the matchup zone that Liberty plays, uh, we feel like we have to really penetrate and pitch and, and get the ball to our best shooters. And so Arlon took on a little bit different role, and six assists is a good night's work. Liberty gets it to three here early in the second half, and you guys respond immediately. Will has hit a lot of big threes. We'll see a couple against PC and Asheville that he hit. Uh, continues to do it for you here, and it was a big stretch when they had it right there to a one-possession game. It sure was, and, you know, that's how college basketball is. There's the ebb and flow of the game, and, 
Uh, we felt like in the second half we were able to take control a little bit with our shot making and and a pretty good job defensively and just finding open guys like that. Arlon, or the recipient of Sav's great penetration and he's so far hard to keep in front and there's really solid ball movement, unselfish play by Will. Uh, just a terrific effort there. Jabbar Washington knocks down a three there and obviously anytime you put together a winning streak, maybe not necessarily in the scoring column, but you're getting some more contributions from your bench. You, Game before this against Longwood, Ruben Kane was a starter for you. He gave you some energy. Jabbar's giving you a couple of minutes, and that helps out, definitely. It sure does. We're really pleased with the development of Jabbar, and he's really come along, and it took him a while to learn our style of play, but he's given us tremendous energy off the bench, and what a terrific player he's going to be. Three's kept on coming here for Charleston Southern, as you're seeing. Bucks end up winning this game 80-58. to Will Saunders and Saw Nimley with seven each, and... Like you said, Sal's ability to draw defenders, and if Will gets his feet set, he's about as good as it gets shooting the ball. Yeah, that's terrific ball movement. First Sal to Will on the previous clip, and now Will to Sal. Um, just really good ball movement. We're really pleased with how our guys played. Good finish there by, by Javis. Um, a very young, very talented young man. He's going to be a terrific player for us. 80-58, to 58, the final in favor of CSU. That was the Bucks. Second straight win, you beat Longwood before that, and then you have to go back on the road and play a much improved PC team. And what was the preparation like going into that game? It was tough because we, 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 Presbyterian is a drastically different team than they were in the past couple of years. They're, they're a three-headed monster now, and it's more than just Downey and Truss. And uh, our preparation, we knew uh, watching film. The first time I saw Presbyterian on film, I knew that was a much improved team and that it was going to be a battle there in Clinton. It's always tough to go there. It's always tough to play there. They're, they're, they're a tough team. They, they do a great job of taking on the personality of Coach Nybert, who's a terrific longtime veteran coach and very good coach and uh, a very intense and, and driven guy. And, and uh, his team takes on that personality. So uh, we knew it was going to be a tough game, and it, and it proved to be a very difficult game. Went down to the wire in Clinton on Saturday. We'll take a look at some highlights from that game. After this, you're watching the Barclay Radio Ball Show, sponsored by Cruise Chevrolet. Big offensive rebound again by Cedric Bowen, his second here down the stretch. Didn't hit the rim. There's only four to shoot. Nimley drives, finds Saunders, another corner tray. Number one's good. Two straight for Will. The driving kick by Nimley. Charleston Southern's going to go to four and two in league play. Welcome back to the Barclay Radio Boss Show as we move into some highlights from the Bucks' victory in Clinton at Presbyterian on Saturday. And you mentioned, Coach, before the break, PC much improved to Sean Murray, the opening tip there, a freshman that's really made a difference for them. Might be the freshman of the year in the league. Just terrific player, very strong. Uh, first time I've seen him in person uh, since AAUs, and uh, he's really developed. That staff has done a good job of, of helping him grow as a player and not just be a, an inside guy, but to, he, he's, he's really added a nice uh, perimeter game and a soft touch from 15 feet. It's a close game pretty much throughout second and three straight 30-point games for Saan. Emily, nice ball movement there, gets Cedric Bowen a layup underneath. You guys got a lot of open shots in this game, didn't hit them at times, but the rebounds uh, made a big difference late. You know, we're not going to hit our shots every night, and, and we were able to defend a little bit, and, uh, and we made just enough plays down the stretch. And, you know, sometimes uh, the open looks are, are, are just they're not going to go down. And, and this was one of those games where we moved the ball and got great looks and uh, a bunch of really good shots rimmed out that could have made a difference early. But credit Presbyterian on that. I mean, they, they, they really hustled defensively and contested our shots and uh, really worked at it. So um, credit them. They're, they're a much improved team. And I, I really like their team and I like how they, they are developing. and they're going to be another team like Liberty that's going to be really good the second half of the season. Seven ties, three lead changes in the first half. Threes from San Arlon helped the Bucks take a halftime lead. Austin Anderson with a tray there for Presbyterian as the Bucks end up taking a 32-29 lead into halftime. And early in the second half, a big stretch to open. You opened up on a 15-5 run, kind of put some distance in between you. And particularly on the road, that began to the second half is always big. It really is. And we came out and made some adjustments at halftime on how we wanted to play, and uh, particularly how we wanted to play Murray. And uh, it, it proved to be a good, good decision by our staff. And 
I really appreciate the contributions that those guys make. Our assistant coaches are just terrific, and uh, they noticed a couple things we were able to do. Great finish by, by Arlon there. Um, he's beginning to play the, like the Arlon Harper we all know, and uh, that's good. We love when Arlon plays like that, very aggressive, and uh, he's always a great defender, great position guy, full of savvy and feel for the game. So uh, you'll see in our next game how, how, how well Arlon is playing uh, going into the second half of the year. You got the lead out to 13. PC, though, wouldn't go away to their credit. Jordan Downing got hot in the second half for them. Saw was able to drive inside for a layup, but it was a game, again, that came down to the closing minutes, and you guys made the tough plays late. We really did. Just offensive rebounds. Again, there's a second shot opportunity. If Cedric saw hits the shot, Cedric deserves the credit. Cedric hustled, uh, made plays, excellent ball movement by Ruben, just how we had coached him to do it. And um, certainly a very good, good, excellent ball movement there by Arlon. Big shot, big shot there to get it to nine with a minute to go because we knew Downey was gonna come and uh, made some plays late to keep Presbyterian uh, within striking distance and another really big three, good ball screen and, uh, and, and good penetration by Saw and an excellent shot by Will. Saw and Will wasn't their best shooting night, Will in particular, but they hit the big shots the last five minutes and that's what you want from your seniors. And then Cedric, the two offensive rebounds both led to threes, two of the biggest plays in the game. Really did. Cedric is a winner and uh, makes big plays for us and he does it sometimes an unsung hero, but quite a team guy a guy that always uh, is, is wanting to put team first and sacrifices a lot, defends and rebounds very well, and we're very thankful for Cedric. So that win over Presbyterian got the Bucks to four and two in conference play. It was a quick turnaround. You've had a few of those here early in the yeah. season. Monday here at the Buck Dome against UNC Asheville, excellent basketball game, and we'll look at that after this on the Barclay Ray Ball Show. I mean, it's always exciting playing against another one of the top players in the Big South. Um, you know, I give him respect. He's a he's a heck of a player, and um, you know, it was just fun tonight. Um, you know, he comes down, hits a shot, and I come down, hits a shot. He comes down, hits a shot. Our line hits a shot. You know, it's just fun. You know, what I mean, so it's always good playing against a guy like that. And you always know you gotta bring your A game, and I think we did that tonight. Back on the Barclay Radio Boss Show, brought to you by Cruz Chevrolet as we move into some highlights of CSU's win over UNC Asheville on Monday at the Buck Dome, and you guys have had a couple of great games with them in this building the last couple of years, and this one followed suit. I did. They're a really good team. Well coached, talented, skilled, big. Uh, you can see why they were, you know, they were four and one in the league coming in. Uh, just a really talented team. So what a basketball game too. Good, good, again, ball movement by us, and Arlon really played well offensively uh, this game, and it's good to see him get going. When, when he and Sa can go at the same time, it's quite a backcourt. Saw and Arlon combined for 58 points in this game. Arlon had nine of your first 11. And when he gets going good, like you said, at the same time, but he also has that mid-range game that helps you guys out too. It really does. And uh, excellent execution by Javis Howard. Javis played some good minutes for us. And uh, we hit the lift. And uh, I was so impressed with Aaron Wheeler. He, he came to play. He was tenacious on the glass, unselfish with the ball worked on the defensive end. Uh, Aaron was really uh, one of the reasons we were able to beat Asheville. He had six offensive rebounds, six of 21 offensive boards for the Bucks as they opened up a 10-point lead here in the first half, got to as many as 13. You really came out and played really well the first 13, 15 minutes or so. It really did, and we talked about that on getting off to a great start and playing a full 40 minutes, not having any lulls offensively, no lulls defensively, offensively or defensively, and uh, just I felt like this was one of the games where we, we had to play 40 minutes, and I think we did. Four-point play there from the corner for Son Emily. Gave the Bucks that 13-point lead. He gets by Andrew Rousey there. Rousey would have some points in the second half as him and Nimley, two of the best players in the league, two of the best under six foot anywhere. Aaron Wheeler with the steal there leads to a basket in transition. And you mentioned Aaron. I imagine the way he played the other night, kind of what you guys hope to envision his role being coming into the year. He played 37 minutes. and. Um, you know, I just felt really good with Aaron in there uh, he, he, because he was making plays. And, and, and again, maybe some plays that don't show up on the stat sheet, but certainly 
it gives us that big guard, the big 6'4", long-armed guard that can play above the rim, and um, we're thankful for him. Good, good decisions by Asheville. They have a good inside-outside game, and uh, anytime Rousey gets his hands on it, uh, it's certainly a challenge to defend him. Led by six at halftime, Asheville kept coming in the second half, but it seemed like every time you needed a bucket, you got it. And the offensive rebounds, obviously a big part of that. Gomber gets one there, back out for Sa. He had 31, and the offensive rebounds really the difference in the game. Sometimes it's a it's the great best opportunity to get a shot. You, everybody's around the rim. If you offensive rebound it and move it, move the ball quickly outside of that offensive or after that offensive rebound, then uh, then often you can get a great look. Probably pretty bad defensive play there by us with you know the leading scorer in the league, and we we move away from him and uh, unselfish play there. Good job, good ball movement by Cedric and Rumid, and again, size the beneficiary of that and good team basketball. Really like it. Had some big answers in this game to the Bucks. Nimley won there after Rousey got it down to three, and we know he can hit shots, and he hit some in the second half. He sure did. He's talented. And, and, and I guess the bank was open in Charleston late there, Kev. How many of those have you had go against you the last couple of years? We've had a bunch years? of them. We've had a lot of bank shots go in, and that's okay. Um, we, we, we just keep going. When things like that happen, you just got to keep going. And um, unfortunate, but good solid screen there by, by uh, Cedric and a big shot to get it to six. Huge shot by Arlon. Rousey comes back with the answer. He had 34, 27 for Harper. 31 for Nimley. You want to talk about some high-level guard play in that game. And Cedric Bowen with the exclamation point on the win here. And had to be a really satisfying win for your team to beat one of the top teams in the league. Uh, it really is. And we're, we're, um, it was a good basketball game, uh, well played by both teams. And that's what you're going to have in the Big South uh, on a lot of occasions. Uh, we got a bunch of them coming up against some of the top teams in the league. And we just got to play well. And then you got to get that one done. Uh, win or lose, you got to move on and prepare for the next one. And our league has been so good that we're going to have a number of games like that coming up. And you know, I'm really excited about what's going to get ready to happen in the Bug Dome. I know that we're getting as we, as we get into conference play that our crowds are going to continue to swell and they've gotten bigger and bigger every every night. I really want to challenge the season ticket holders. Our students are getting out there and, and doing a great job. But you look behind our bench there and you see some of our season ticket holders not coming to the game. So if you're a season ticket holder and you have those tickets and you don't come, then that's an empty seat. So what I'm asking you to do, season ticket holders, is if you're not going to come to the game, give your tickets away. Give them to somebody who has never come to see the Buccaneers play. Let them enjoy your tickets instead of that seat going empty. We need the Bug Dome to be incredibly crazy and loud. Uh, we need it to be a, a big time advantage for us. It's a big advantage. We need it to be even more. Uh, what are we, 69 and 16 along those lines the yeah. last few years at home? And a lot of that has been because of the crowds. And we need to get those crowds back. And we've, been, we've, been, we've had great crowds. We need better crowds. And we've been loud. We need it, Kev, to be louder. Uh, if we're going to make a run at, at, at this thing and, and, and try to get into and stay in the race, a big part of it, we got to do it together. We got to do it with our, our, our team preparing well, our coaches doing a great job, but also our students and our fans coming out in record numbers to fill the Buck Dome. You get a big one Saturday, Gardner Webb, a team that you've had another some really good battles with these last couple of years, another big test for your team. It sure is. Gardner Webb is, is again, like Asheville, one of the best teams in our league. Uh, they have some of the best players in the league, and uh, it's going to be a high level, very tough basketball game, and we need the Bug Dome rocking off its hinges. 5.30 tip, Charleston Southern and Gardner Webb be early, be loud, as Coach said. Make sure to be there as Charleston Southern tries to make it five in a row and get to six and two in the Big South. For Barclay Radabaugh, my name is Kevin O'Rourke. Thanks for watching the Barclay Radabaugh Show, sponsored by Cruise Chevrolet.